We were the largest to ever graduate from Hunter, and we're also the noisiest. <laughs> we're all glad to be here today, or should I say, still be here today. We've come not with new partners, but with new parts like hips and knees. <laughs> we graduated on the cusp of the turbulent 60s. That's why I'm calling you at least enough Okay? Our generation whispered the word lesbian. It was never acknowledged in our class. We took advantage of our Hunter education. We became professors, teachers, lawyers, doctors, psychiatrists, singers and actors, and we have one mermaid. Even today, <laughs> at 73, she performs in the Golden Fins in the Manatee Shows in Florida. <laughs> and we still live across the world. One of our classmates is in China today speaking about her birth in a Jewish colony in China during World War II. We were the children of survivors of World War II. What draws us together is our friendships and the education we received at Hunter and the experiences there. If you'll excuse us, we must leave now. We've had a bus waiting for half an hour. Thank you very much. time wherever you're going. <laughs> My name is Jane Tillman Irving, class of 65. In our annals, our annals begins, it sometimes happens that strange and separate worlds in their random motion through the sky meet at a single point. For 190 of us, that point was 68th Street and Lexington Avenue at Hunter. Most of us were 11 years old, the best and brightest of our schools, who'd passed the test, been lionized, praised, and now here we were to spend the next six years together. Some joined us later, in ninth grade and in 10th, and four left for college after junior year. But by the time annals came out, we were one body, quoting here again, the glorious, dubious, Seniors of 1965. <laughs> and what times we lived in. We were children of the Cold War who feared the bomb. Sometimes we marched and petitioned to ban it. I remember attending with some of you a far off Broadway show, teen musical, entitled If We Grow Up. If! And sometimes during the Cuban Missile Crisis, it seemed we wondered whether that title was going to turn out to be prophetic. The day in 1962, when the Cuban Missile Crisis came to a head, in Spanish class, Mrs. Lo Fermento, who later became <laughs> principal, yes, Mrs. Lo Fermento, allowed us to vent our fear by singing. We sang God Bless America, we sang This Land Is Your Land, we sang America the Beautiful, we sang everything we knew. We were scared. We were children of the Kennedy era. Most of us liked their politics, and they were great political theater. Inauguration day for John Kennedy happened on a snow day. You remember that? It happened on a snow day. And we were able to sit at home and watch it on TV. We saw from their look, from his speech, that indeed, as he said, the torch had been passed to a new generation, and that included us. And suddenly it was over. On November 22nd, 1963, we were in the middle of midterms called uniforms in those days. Don't ask. <laughs> so no classes were being held. Sarah remembers wandering uptown and finding a church, finding rest in a church. She's not Christian. Marcia told me that she simply didn't want to get out of bed. 
for a couple of days. We were stunned, and we would be again, but not in quite the same way, by the assassinations of Bobby Kennedy, Martin Luther King Jr., and Malcolm X. That was the first one that we experienced. <laughs>